Our Lord and our God, we give you praise and thanks for your mercies that are everlasting, your goodness to us, your showers of blessings, your protection, all the blessings that you so graciously pour out unto us, bestow upon us. We, we are grateful and we give you the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for your protection today on the roads, on the slippery roads. We ask for people to be safe the blood of Jesus Christ to cover people, taking them in and out, back and forth for their well-being, for their blessing, and Lord, also for your glory in the name of Jesus. Teach us your word today, and Lord, I pray that today you confirm your word with miracles, signs, and wonders in the lives of your people to glorify your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift people up, O oh Lord. Encourage them by your spirit. Cause that they break through, run through the troop, and leap over barriers and walls. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let the anointing destroy yokes and remove burdens. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I have a word from God uh, for you today I know we've been I've been teaching you uh, about last week we looked at uh, the life of Jesus uh, in, in in the book of Job Job's life revealing Jesus God uh, told me to share this with you today that he says to tell you that he will make your life a sign and a wonder amen. he will make your life a sign and a wonder amen, amen. so uh, since this is a, a prophetic word I'm just going to but we have a, a Bible study, a teaching. I'm going to, as much as possible, establish it by the Word of God. Amen. And, and uh, somehow just uh, see how we can weave it into our study of Jesus revealed in Job. But the prophetic word that God gave me to share with you today is that He, God, says to tell you that He will make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. Amen. For his glory. Amen. So receive it in receive the name of Jesus. Jesus. May God touch you, touch your family, Amen. turn things around, Amen. and bring glory to his name. Yes, Lord. That people will say, indeed, your God lives. Amen. He is the living God. Amen. He is the true God. He's your only wise God. Amen. May God give you wisdom that will give you breakthroughs as you apply the wisdom of God, will give you breakthroughs in life. May he supply his spirit, the power and the presence of the Lord come upon you. Amen. Amen. So that yokes will be destroyed. Amen. Burdens will be removed. Amen. What has been challenging to you may no longer be a challenge. Amen. Amen. Because there's nothing too hard for your God, for our God. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. Let's, let's go to uh, the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. And uh, we're going to look at a picture of uh, how God, I just wanted to find a scripture that uh, will back or support the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Is that that's because every prophecy from God should agree with the Bible, with the Word of God. Amen. If somebody prophesies something evil to you, you know that is not your portion in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter who's saying it. You know, the Word of God is what must establish everything. Amen. 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 And at this point in the history of the world and in the church in particular, the church of Jesus Christ, the church that he established, where we are is this. We are in the period of grace. Amen. We're living in God's grace. Uh, and so uh, theologically, when you look at the theology of the Bible, uh, the, the place, the position 
that you should be in is grace. Amen. So you might see some examples of some people's lives in the Old Testament, but you cannot necessarily apply that, or that cannot be, may not be able to be applied to you because that was a different time. And the way that God dealt with them was based on the revelation that he had given to them. So they walked in the light that they had. But when you have more light given, you have to walk in the greater light. Does that make sense to you? So there was the Old Testament. Now we have the New Testament. Some things that pertain in the Old don't pertain or apply in the New make sense to you. So you can read something in the Old Testament just because it's in the Bible does not mean that it should happen in your life today. You have to be very careful. You know, uh, for example, the fact that somebody is called Abednego in the Bible doesn't mean you should name your child Abednego. <laughs> so it's not everything in the Bible that is for you today. Although everything in the Bible is accurately recorded, but it's not everything that's in the Bible that's good. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. The devil is written, it's in the Bible. The devil said certain things, but they're not good. All right, you understand? All right, so the Bible isn't like a, a magic book that if you put under your pillow, you know, it will automatically bring you protection. It's, it's not like that. You can have a thousand Bibles in your house and the devil can come and beat that person. The important thing is to get the truth of the word in your spirit. Does this make sense to you? Amen. So we have an Old Testament with a New Testament. If you have a new one, that new one supersedes the old. Just like if somebody wrote a will. Your will, a person's will, is their testament. If they write a new one to replace the old one, it doesn't matter if somebody was given all the inheritance in the old one. If the new one, if their name is not in the new one, they cannot enjoy the old, the, the inheritance, claiming that well, that was in the old one. Well, if the person wrote a new one, so the new replaces the old. The New Testament replaces the old. Praise God. I think you get this. Hallelujah. All right, so Acts chapter 5. We're living in the period of grace, God's grace. And we're looking at a picture of the church. What the church looked like, you know, in the New Testament when it was first started by Jesus Christ. So Acts chapter 5. I'm going to ask uh, to say, Eva, if I could start with you. Uh, from verse... 12, let's see if you can read verse 12 to 15. Okay. Uh, no, excuse me, 12 to 16. Okay. Acts 5, verse 12 to 16. Acts 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow the might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Amen. 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 All right, so here we have a picture of uh, the church of Jesus and things that were happening. Jesus himself had gone to heaven, right? Had ascended to heaven. And the Holy Spirit had been sent, had filled the people. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
now we see here in Acts 5 the apostles were working many signs and wonders right it was obviously God who was working the miracles and signs through the apostles right Amen. okay now it says that uh, what was happening caused the people around mm -hmm. to magnify or elevate the apostles it just they they really seem to be mesmerized by all these miracles and wonders and signs that were happening mm -hmm. to the extent that crowds people would bring their sick loved ones and put them alongside the road where they knew the apostles would be coming by and in particular here it says Peter Peter would walk by and his shadow I mean this is just amazing his shadow you know the, the sun obviously on over him the shadow would be cast onto the people and the people would be healed now I believe that the reason why the crowd, the people would bring their loved ones and put them there is because they had seen it happen. Because what made them do it? They had seen this happen. They had seen that people come into the presence of Peter got healed. God would just heal them. So they just believed that Peter didn't even necessarily have to touch them. But just being in the presence of Peter the people would be healed. God would heal them. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's establish this. It was God who was doing the healing. It was not Peter. It was not Paul. It wasn't the apostles. God was working through them. Right? You all see this. Okay, let's take a scripture to establish that before I move on. Because it's important for all of us to know. Hebrews chapter 2. For all of us to know this. Human beings aren't the ones who perform the miracles. It is God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4. Hebrews chapter 2. Verses 3 and 4. I'm going to ask uh, Brother George, if you please read and make sure. Yes, Hebrews, what did I say? 2, two three. verses 3 and 4. Yes. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard, it, heard him? Go, go also bearing... No, God. Sorry. Yeah, God himself, yeah. God <laughs> also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divine, divinest miracles. No, diverse. Diverse... Miracles. Miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Amen. Amen. Sorry. All right. So... God, Jesus spoke about salvation, Hebrews 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Salvation is called great. Hallelujah. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Verse Four? Is it verse 4? Yes. Mm -hmm. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. The Lord told me to tell you today that he will make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. He will change, transform things in your life in such a way that people, it will get the attention of people. Amen. They are going to say that God is the one who has done this for you. Amen. Receive that word. It's going to come to pass. God's going to do it. Amen. You remember in Acts chapter 5, we saw how the crowds would bring their sick people to the apostles. Now, these were the same people 
who had rejected Jesus. Some of them had been screaming, crucify him, crucify him. And Jesus was crucified. Remember, his disciples were afraid. They, they, they forsook him. They fled. Remember all that? So they knew that they were regular folk. They were normal human beings. So how is it that they would bring sick people to normal human beings to do something for them? Because they now knew God's power had come upon these people. They had become transformed. Amen. Peter denied Jesus. Remember, three times. He did. Peter denied Jesus. His disciples forsook him. The, the, um, well, the point I'm making is that everybody around knew the apostles, knew the disciples. They knew they were normal people. They were people who made mistakes like anybody. So why are they now coming to the apostles for help, for miracles? Because they knew that God was working through them. Amen which is what we see here in Hebrews 2. The Lord Jesus spoke about great salvation. And then those who heard him, the disciples, the apostles, continued to share that about the salvation of the Lord. And God confirmed what they were saying by miracles, signs, and wonders, and even gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord will do the same in your lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will do it. The time for God to favor you is now. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. God wants to show people that he is alive in your life. Amen. Your God isn't dead. Amen. And the Bible that you read is alive. Amen. It works. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, let me emphasize. I, I, I don't know what some of you have been taught, but... I know this that some people have used to some people used to teach that when the apostles died miracles stopped. Has anybody ever heard that? Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard it fine. Mm -hmm. That's good for you. But some people have been taught not to expect miracles because they've been taught that it was the apostles who worked the miracles. No. Here we see it was God working the miracles by his spirit Amen. through the apostles. Fair enough. It was God. It wasn't the people. So if miracles come from God, it doesn't matter uh, the vehicle, the vessel through whom God is working. As long as God is alive, God will work miracles. Amen. Amen. And he said to come and tell you today, he will make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. If there's a sickness that has defied medical Miracle, medical breakthroughs, God will give you a miracle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. People that you know who have been struggling with demonic spirits, God will set them free. Amen. Sometimes there are some mental issues, God will set them free. Jesus. He's Amen. a God who removes the spirit of heaviness from people Amen. and gives us a garment of joy. Amen. 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 His joy will be your strength. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, you know, in families you have maybe a son or a daughter who is struggling, you know, struggling with school or maybe has even graduated uh, just for years, sometimes 10 years. They don't even know what to do. They start this and they stop. It just seems like something is hindering them. They're depressed they're, and, and the family is struggling. Let me tell you, God says he'll make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. It is not by human might or human power that the breakthrough will come. But by his spirit, Amen. the yokes will be destroyed. Amen. Believe the Lord your God Amen. and you'll be established. Amen. Believe his prophetic words that Amen. agree with the Bible and you'll Amen. prosper. Amen. 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 Healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Signs and wonders will happen in your life. Amen. That will draw others to Christ. Amen. They know you, that you're a regular person. The same way they knew the apostles, which were regular people. Peter denied Jesus. Now look at him. When Peter is coming by, people put sick people by the road. So Peter's shadow will heal them. Amen. Whoever heard of that, that a shadow of a human being heals? Amen. It's because they knew that God was at work. Amen. I'm telling you, God's going to work miracles, signs, and wonders Amen. in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
as a lady who uh, she had a husband, you know, the lady will conceive and will miscarry, conceive, miscarry. And it had been going on for a while. And she told a friend of hers, the friend said, oh, come to my church. My pastor will pray for you because I've seen this miracle happen in the church. And this was actually with a couple. We've been married for a while and there was not even a miscarriage. There was no conception. For years, God brought them there. I prayed for them, and God healed them, and they had they had children. So, the the friend told this lady, "Oh, no, come to my church. I've seen this before. Not only is, is it in the Bible, but I've actually seen it happen. This this couple, God, the pastor prayed for them, and God healed them, and they had they had their children. So anyway, the lady came, and she brought her husband. I prayed for them." God heal them. Today they have four children. Amen. 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 So when you see something like this and somebody at work you know are going through a similar thing, what are you going to tell them? You're going to tell them that God is working what? Signs and wonders. Amen. I'm telling you, no matter what you're going through, be encouraged today. Amen. That Goliath will fall. Amen. They may come against you with human power or demonic power, whatever. But the power of God is greater than any power on this earth. Amen. God will make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So it's not apostles who did the signs and miracles. It was God. Amen. I'll give you one more scripture about that to establish that indeed it was God who was working through Paul and the others. You know, let's go to, back to Acts chapter 19. Go back to Acts chapter 19 and verses 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12. So Acts 19 verses 11 and 12. Let's have someone else read for us who has it. You have it? Yes. Yes, please. Acts 19, 11, 12. And God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchief or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Amen. Now, isn't that powerful? Yes. Okay, now, here's the question I'm going to ask you now. I answer it myself. Who worked the miracles? God. God. That, that is so important to me that you get this. Amen. I don't work miracles. Human beings don't work miracles. God, don't look to people. Yes. I know you like me. You respect me. I appreciate that. Praise God. But you have to look to Jesus. Amen. We don't worship human beings. We worship Jesus Christ. We worship God. Amen. So it says in Acts 19 verse 11. I, I'm emphasizing this because we live in the last days and I'm telling you all kinds of craziness going on. There are people who are going to tell you they are Christ. There are people who are going to tell you they'll do something for you and all kinds of scams and fraud and all that. You have to follow those things. You follow Jesus Christ. Sometimes unfortunately because of fraud and deception it's made some people not even interested in miracles. But you'd be shortchanging yourself. Because your God only does wonderful things. Amen. Whatever God does is wonderful. Amen. In the book of Psalms, it says he only does wondrous things. Amen. Our God is amazing. Amen. You look at his creation, and it's in fact, it is wonderful. Praise God. Mountains and the ocean and the birds and the trees and different flowers, different colors. I mean, God is just awesome. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's excited. God is not boring at all. When I was a little boy, you know, in, in secondary school, when I was a boy in secondary school, Christianity was a bit dry for me, you know. I was like, man. And reading the Bible was like a chore. Today you cannot pry me away from it because I see it's living. Amen. In my heart, I knew that God had to be exciting. But the way that he was presented to me was like, nah. This is, this is too boring. It can't be. It can't be. There has to be something more. And I indeed found out something more. Amen. The Holy Spirit 
He works miracles. He works signs. He works wonders. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus in whom we have believed is alive. Amen. He has brought us so great salvation, salvation from sin, that you may have peace with God. Amen. Not through any work you have done, but by his grace and his grace alone. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. So great salvation. Amen. Don't let it slip from you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. All right. So God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. And so there are miracles and there are special miracles. Right? It says special miracles. What are those? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. So you see, well, first of all, we notice he does making a, he's making a distinction. There are miracles, and then there are what? Special miracles. Okay, special miracles. Let's look at the context where we are told, Acts 19, verse 11. Whenever you're studying the Bible, you don't only look at the material, the information. You don't only look at the content, all right, the, the content, what, what it contains. But you, you look at it in the context in which whatever it is you're reading, the context in which it is written. Mm -hmm. And you, what you do is, to understand it too, you, you use other scriptures to shed light on whatever question you have that you, you're considering. Make sense to you? So if it is healing that you're reading about, you need other scriptures to shed light on this particular verse you're looking at. Make sense to you? And you look at the verse in the context in which it is provided. Okay, so Acts 19, 11 says, God wrought miracles, special miracles by the hands of Paul. Today you've seen the distinction between miracles and what? Special miracles. Now, Paul's question is, what are the special miracles? He answers it himself. In verse 12. So it's not what I'm about, what I say, it's what he says. In verse 12 he says, so notice he says, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, verse 12, so that, do you see this? So now he's going to explain an example or examples of what? Special miracles. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Amen. So there was deliverance. But the way the deliverance manifested here and the healing manifested where sicknesses departed from people was through this. Somehow... The cloth, so just excuse me, I'll use cloth because it says handkerchief or aprons. Handkerchief and aprons usually are cloth. They are not metal. They are not wood. Right? Okay. So some cloth material taken from Paul was placed on sick people and when that contact was made from the cloth that was on Paul's body or the handkerchief that was on Paul's body. So I don't know how they did it. Whether, let's say that Paul had it in his pocket while he was praying and preaching or whatever. And at the end of the meeting, he said, now take this and go and put it on your sick person at home. And they did that, and they were healed. It says it was, it was taken from Paul's body. You following this? We're not told how, but if it's from his body, it's from his body. So likely, it was maybe in his pocket. There was a connection from Paul's body to the cloth. Today, what we can do, for example, is lay hands on the cloth and pray in Jesus name that this cloth will be a point of contact for the power of God to be released into the sick person. Amen. So take this, 
put it on your child's pillow, for example. And when it touches the child's pillow, the part, it becomes a point of contact, just a conduit, a point of contact for God's power to be transferred to the child's pillow. So when the child put their, puts their head on the pillow, whatever is disturbing the child, tormenting the child, that thing will leave. Mm -hmm. The power is not in the cloth. The power is in the Holy Spirit. The cloth is just a conduit. It's a point of contact. Mm -hmm. Amen. For example, it may not be possible for Paul to go to every house. You know, it says that the cloth was put on the sick people and people who had evil spirits and the sick people were healed. The diseases departed from them and the evil spirits left them. Well, some people may not have been brought to the meeting, you know, to the location where Paul was. You understand this? It's just practical. Some things is just how practical is this? Yes. All right. So you could come in here today. And before you leave, you could say, okay, Pastor Turkson, since God gave us a special word today that he works signs, miracles, and wonders, and there's an anointing for this today, could you please pray over this handkerchief? If you asked me to do that, I would, I would pray because you happen to have that faith that there'll be a release of God's power when you take this, your handkerchief, Nothing that I'm selling to you. You got to be very careful about these things. Because it's a special thing. You know, this is where people get deceived. And people begin to sell you special cloth, special oil, special water. And they sell all kinds of things. A lot of it is fraud. Some of it is sincere, but they may be sincerely wrong. A few cases are actually true as it happened in Paul's ministry. Amen. Amen. If you read through the Bible, you see God was working miracles in Paul's life, but you don't see every case where it says special miracles. Mm -hmm. There were miracles, but there were some things that were unusual because it's not, a, it's not you know, normal that you take handkerchiefs from somebody's body and you go and put it on the, on the sick. That's not generally the normal way that things are done. We lay hands on people and we pray for them. But you may not be able to bring everybody to the minister, but you can take something from the minister to that person. Amen. Amen. I know a testimony of uh, a woman whose uh, daughter was, uh, had, was mentally ill. This had gone on for years. And she went to a meeting where a minister called Shambak, Brother Shambak, was ministering. It wasn't Shambak who was selling any cloth. It wasn't Shambak who even initiated that. It was the woman who said to Brother Shambak, put this handkerchief in your suit pocket during the time that you're teaching and ministering, when the anointing is on you. Are you following this? Yeah. Then that anointing on that cloth, I believe that when I take it and I put it on my child, the demon will leave my child. Amen. She did it, and her child was delivered in the mental asylum. Amen. Yes. Now, what is fascinating about this is that Brother Shambach tells this testimony in one of his meetings, and another woman who also had a child who was in a mental institution had nothing on her but a piece of candy. <laughs> and there was a woman, it wasn't somebody. I'm emphasizing this because I know there are people out there who start selling candy and start selling things like that. No, it was a woman who said to Brother Shambak, please keep this like you kept that. The woman gave you the cloth and you put it on in your pocket and the anointing from you came on it. Give this, my, my daughter likes candies. Put their candy on you. I believe that God's anointing will come upon it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the service, pray over it. Give me the candy. I give it to my daughter. She did that. The daughter ate it. In fact, Shamba says when she, he heard that, he, he himself was like, wow. I've never done this before. I'm never, you know. But the woman said, I believe it's going to happen. 
And the daughter ate the candy and she was delivered. Amen. Amen. So I don't know whether it was the Holy Spirit who told the woman, take candy and give it to Brother Shamba, give it, give it to my servant, let him put it in his pocket. Or, I don't know. But the woman said she had heard previously the testimony of of somebody whose daughter was financially, I mean, mentally unstable, and a piece of cloth from Brother Shambach's body, same as we read. But let me, again, let me emphasize, please don't let people start selling you stuff. Because we have all kinds of, you understand this? God just gave me this word to tell you today that he is he. He didn't say, I'm going to do it. He didn't say, the great archbishops who do it for you. He said, he, God, tell them that I will make their lives a sign and a wonder for my glory. Receive it in Jesus' name. Praise God. And God worked special miracles. So you learn today there are miracles and there are what? Special miracles. For example, the shadow of Peter falling on people and healing them was what? A special miracle. It was a special miracle. I mean, who ever heard of somebody's shadow healing somebody? I can't even understand, okay, I lay hands on you, and the power of God from me is transferred to you and destroys the yoke in the spirit realm and heals somebody in Jesus' name. I get that. I understand that. In fact, it's easy for me to say, oh, yeah, that I get. But my shadow? I mean, that's pretty cool. Would you say, man, that is cool. You got to admit it. Now, this is wonderful. Look at our God. He's able to do any and everything. Believe the Lord your God, and you are going to be established. And believe his prophetic word that agrees with the Bible, and you will prosper. You see, God does wonderful things. When God says, I'm going to do something, in the natural, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. All right, let me, look, let me show you another scripture. Isaiah. We have time? Oh. Isaiah chapter 8. When it's going so well, then, you know, time. Oh. Isaiah 8. Quickly, let's go to Isaiah 8. 18. Isaiah 8, 18. If you find it, please read it for us so we can do this quickly. Isaiah 8, verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Amen. Doesn't this agree with the prophecy God gave me to give to you? Yes. Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 You see, Isaiah said, Behold, I am the children. So not only you, but God says even your family, your children. Amen. You are for what? Science. Can you read that again, please? Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. From the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. So God is always going to do it, not you. Amen. God says he's going to do it, but he's going to make you and your family a sign and a wonder. Amen. Amen. I know it's in the Old Testament, but it's in the New Testament as well. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. After this, we'll pray. Hebrews 2. This is awesome. This is going to blow you away. Amen. Spiritually speaking, of course. <laughs> Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. This is what we just read is actually something Jesus himself said and is still saying. Watch this. Hebrews 2 and read verse 12 and 13. Hebrews 2, verse 12 and 13. Brother George, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12, please. Verse 12. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. Now verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God had given me. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me ask you a question. Verse 13, the last part of verse 13. Behold, I and the children 
which God had given me. Where is that from? Isaiah. That's Isaiah 8, 18. You see? And over here, it is Jesus talking. It is Jesus talking. Hebrews 2, I read from verse 11. Let me read. For both he that sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. All right. For both he, Jesus, who sanctifies, and those who are sanctified, that is, we who are sanctified, we are all of one, one God, one Father. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus is saying that I call you my family. You are my brothers because we are all of the same Father. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God becomes your Father. You see, people who are not born again don't know God as Father. They know Him as God, but not as Father. But we call Him Father. And Jesus says here that the children that God has given to Him, together with Jesus, quoting from Isaiah, we are for what? Signs and for wonders. Do you see this? So we've established this from Scripture. Amen. And I'm finally, I'm going to close with this. We'll pick up on it next week. I want to close with this. Do you remember last week from our studies about Job, we saw that I made a point, I made this point, that when God restored Job's fortunes to him, delivered him and restored him, God gave him seven sons and three daughters. Remember? And last week we made this point that God gave us the names of the daughters and not of the sons. Yes. In the Old Testament, we are often given the names of the sons and not the daughters. But when God restored Job's fortune, delivered him, and gave him double, God gave us the names of his daughters and said that in all the land, Job's daughters were more beautiful than everyone, everyone else, right? So what was that saying? That was saying that Job's daughters were a sign. Think about it. Yes, they were a sign. Just like Isaiah and his children were signs. You getting it? Is it simmering? Yes. <laughs> Entering your bone and your spirit? God will make your life a sign and a wonder. Amen. God's daughters were speaking. Their lives were speaking to the community. That when God restores your fortunes, you are the best. You are the brightest, the most beautiful. I pray that God will beautify your life with his salvation. That healing will be your portion. The Lord your God forgives you of every sin. Heals you of every disease. Redeems your life from destruction. And crown you with love and kindness and tender mercies. In the name of Jesus. May God make your life pure and bright and beautiful. May he make you and your house a shining light for the glory of God. May his anointing be on you. That evil spirits will flee from your offices Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. will flee. Any spirit that is risen against you at work will bow by the power and the presence of God Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That those who speak against you will be muzzled Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. In fact, I join with you in faith and we condemn every tongue that is risen against you in judgment in Jesus' name. And declare that no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. Amen. May the Lord cause the Goliaths against you to bow Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And like young David, may the Lord lift you up. Amen. That the one who was down may now be up. Amen. The weak may be made strong. Amen. The sick may be healed Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And as he made Job and his daughters a sign. May God make you and your house a sign Amen. and a wonder Amen. 
to the glory of God's name and the glory of his grace. In Jesus' name, I pronounce you blessed. I pronounce you blessed. May you also be a blessing to others for God's glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God.